Hi everybody! In this video I'm gonna show you how to clean your Xbox Series X's cooling system, replace the thermal paste and thermal pads, and disassemble and reassemble your console like a pro. It's a very simple process and I'll walk you through the whole thing. For this project you'll need a T8 torque screwdriver, tweezers, prying tools, a paintbrush, thermal putty, and some thermal paste. I recommend using Grizzly Cry Knot. I'll put links to all the stuff in the description below. So, first you need to disassemble your device. Let's start by removing these two stickers that cover the screws. And then remove the screws themselves. Then, using a prying tool or a flathead screwdriver, carefully pry the back cover at the bottom of the console and pull it out. Next, remove the stand by pushing the latch upward with a flathead screwdriver and rotating the stand counterclockwise. Now we can remove these four screws. Next, we need to disconnect the fan connector from the motherboard and remove these screws that secure the fan. Then remove the fan by lifting it up and out of the case. Now we need to remove this plate that holds the disk drive in place. Once the plate is removed, disconnect the power and SATA cables from the drive and then remove the drive itself. Next, disconnect these ribbon cables from the motherboard. To do this, gently open the metal latch with the prying tool and pull out the cable. For the other cable, simply push the latch and pull up the cable. With the cables disconnected, slide the chassis forward and pull the whole thing out of the case. Now let's take off this rubber strap, like so. Then remove the wireless board. And now it's time to remove all the screws. Remove this bracket and the remaining screw. Once the screws are removed, detach the power cable from this plastic holder and lift the metal cover off the board. Next, disconnect these power connectors by pressing on their latches. Once disconnected, remove the power supply. Then disconnect the interconnection ribbon cable. This connector may have two locking tabs on the sides or one in the middle. To disconnect, push on the tab and pull out the cable. With the cable disconnected, you can remove the system board. Next, we need to carefully unscrew the X-clamp in a diagonal pattern. Now, gently separate the motherboard from the heatsink by pulling them apart slowly and carefully. Use a prying tool or your fingers to ease them apart if necessary. So, let's start by inspecting the cooling system. This is the site of the heatsink where all dust and dirt begins to build up. You can use a paintbrush to brush off the dust and then use a blower or a can of compressed air to blow out any remaining debris from the heatsink. Now repeat the same process for the fan. Just give it a good blowout to make sure it's nice and clean. Also try spinning the fan by hand. It should spin easily and freely. If it doesn't, I'd recommend replacing the fan. The link will be down below. As you can see, the thermal compound is already dry and needs to be replaced. Use an alcohol swab or wet wipes to remove the old compound. Then gently wipe off any remaining residue from the APU. You can also use Q-tips to remove the remaining paste. 
but be careful not to rip off any components. Next check if the thermal putty pads are not damaged or dried out. If they need to be replaced, use a spudger to remove the old pads, clean the surface of the memory chips and VRM components with urban alcohol and apply new pads with the same amount of paste. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply the thermal paste. There's a whole bunch of theories about thermal paste application methods and which one provides the best cooling performance. The problem with the methods like the dot and the line is that the thermal paste doesn't spread out evenly. So I suggest using the spread method instead. As you can see, the last method guarantees nice and even coverage of the APU die surface. So apply the right amount of thermal paste to the chip and spread it evenly without any gaps. You can use a plastic card or an applicator which comes with the paste. Now flip the board and carefully reattach it to the heatsink. Install the X clamp and secure it with the screws. And you can also replace the thermal putty on your SSD. Carefully remove this metal shielding and clean the surface of the SSD and the metal shielding with urban alcohol. Then apply the thermal putty onto the SSD surface, like so. Put the metal shielding back on and gently press it down to secure it. Finally, reassemble your console in the reverse order of its disassembly. Run the ribbon cable through the chassis and carefully reconnect it. Before installing the power supply, blow out any dust from it using compressed air. Now we can reconnect these connectors. Then place the metal cover over the motherboard and secure everything with the screws.
Install the wireless card and replace the screws. Then attach the rubber strap. Now let's put the whole thing into the case. Then install the optical drive and its cover. Install the fan and connect all the cables to the board. Now we can secure all the parts with the screws. Attach the stand like so. This tiny hole on the stand should be close to the one on the drive. Then turn it clockwise until it clicks into place. Now these holes are aligned and you can use it for emergency manual disk eject. Finally put the back cover in place and secure it with the screws. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.